So my brothers and sisters in Islam, I begin with a verse in Surah Ali Imran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a comparison between the world we live in and the world that is next which he has promised. Allah says in the Quran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور which means know that this worldly life is nothing but play and entertainment and decorations and competition boasting over what I have and what you have among each other and raising and gathering loads and herds of wealth and children a backbone just like a cloud that comes that pleases farmers a lot because they look forward to it and then it begins to rain and produce for them crops of abundance and then those crops after a little while wither away and then till the next season so you enjoy it for a little bit and it's gone this is the example of the worldly life Allah says and in the hereafter he says there will be heart torment and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with Allah is the best of rewards but you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says he says قُلْ أَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ مِّن ذَلِكُمْ Do you want me to tell you something better than all of that? Something greater than all of this that people strive for? لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّةٌ تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَأَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ For those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abstain from the things which anger Him, with their Lord are many paradises. Jannat is a plural for Jannah. Jannat is plural for Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has installed many, many gardens for one single person beneath which rivers flow and pure, beautiful spouses and a pleasure from your Lord. And, with, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware watching everyone. Brothers and sisters in Islam, you've all heard about paradise. You've all heard about Jannah. And some people think of it as a fantasy. They can't really grasp the reality of it. Let me, inshallah, draw a picture for you and give an analogy and try my best to bring you close to the description of Jannah to the best of my ability. But at the same time, I don't think anyone has succeeded in describing Jannah because the Prophet وسلم, did say, فِيهَا مَا لَعَيْنُ الرَّأَتْ In paradise, there are things that no eye has ever seen. وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ And no ear has ever heard. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ And it hasn't even occurred to the heart of any creation. You know when you say khatar or khatira, it's like a thought. And when Allah is using qalb, meaning the heart, not only is it a thought in the brain, but even a thought in feelings. No one's ever experienced, you know, sometimes you say to yourself, you know, I feel like uh, something, but I don't know how to describe it. Have you ever gone through that type of feeling? I feel like I want to, um, I want some kind of enjoyment and there's something I want, but I can't name it. But I feel it and I wish you could feel what I'm feeling. I wish I could give it a name, but you can't. So Allah says, even that, no one has ever experienced that type of feeling. There are things in Jannah like that. So how can I describe it, subhanAllah? But we can give a little tiny example of what Jannah is like. Brothers and sisters in Islam, since my topic is a walk 
into Jannah. Then let me begin with the verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us where that walk begins. Allah says in Surah Al Zumar. And so the ones who are pious and God fearing shall be escorted line by line, rose by rose, to Jannah. You know why they are rose by rose? Because everybody will be gathered with the ones whom they used to love the most. And according to your deeds, you will be in the front row or the second row or third row or fourth row and so on and so forth. how beautiful is that picture they are escorted by the angels rows after rows according to where they belong according to their deeds and status and then when they reach it, Allah says at the doors of Jannah and the door is opened the angels who are standing to welcome the people they say to them the first word what do you think they say first thing peace because this is what we're all yearning for we're yearning for the everlasting comfort of peace in our heart and for the rest of our life physically in our feelings in our ears with what we see with how we speak and that's the first thing the angels say. Salamun alaykum. Peace is all upon you. Tibetum. Oh, how pure and wonderful you are. Fadkhuluha khalidin. Now enter it. Everlasting entrance. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to describe that moment when you're about to enter Jannah and then as you enter it, inshaAllah ta'ala. In the books of Tafsir, and I relate authentic hadiths insha'Allah there is a, a series of lectures I gave about the end series and there's so much information about paradise in this only 20 minutes that I have we'll try insha'Allah to summarize it in a way that you can get a clear picture you come to the doors of Jannah and you don't enter it straight away because guess who has to open the door he is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he grabs the ring. Allahu alam what that ring looks like. Allah only knows the perfect description of this door. It's a marvelous door. Huge door. Very wide. Hundreds of kilometers wide, in fact. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's doors to Jannah are wide. And his generosity is immense. The first one to knock on it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the guardian behind the door, the angel, asks, Who is it? And he says with all humbleness, Ana Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the angel says, Bika umirta al umirtu alla aftaha illa lak, ilayk, or lak. It is you who I have been commanded to not open the door to anyone but you. And the door is opened. He is the one privileged our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine brothers and sisters, if you are the first group that enters with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, the other people who are waiting, you see people come in lines. And as you come to the uh, doors of Jannah, there is like a waiting area. And the doors get crowded. The doors get very crowded according to the hadith, even though they are hundreds of kilometers wide. And the people want to race in there. And there are people waiting. You know when you go first class on, uh, on an aeroplane, you're going overseas somewhere. Alhamdulillah, I got the chance to go first class once in my life. <laughs> you go first class and you get to wait in this beautiful, uh, this luxurious area. Special um, guests, I've even forgot the name of it. <laughs> and you get special services. So you're waiting there. And the first thing that you are given is to quench your thirst. After all this time of waiting in the Day of Judgment, you are given wine, which is mixed with ginger, to refresh yourself in the waiting area. 
And you are with these beautiful people with bright faces. They're all smiling. They're all cheerful. They're all telling you, come and read my book. And you say, read mine. And they say, well, you know, what about mine? Look what I've done here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wiped away all the sins. No one knows them. They're a secret between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you begin to boast about your books out of happiness. And no one feels jealous of anyone else for some reason. The feelings are starting to change. Because Allah says in the Quran, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ we, have, we will take out from their hearts every bad feeling. No jealousy, no hatred, no envy, no competition. None of that. And everybody's happy for everyone else. In fact, everyone's happy for what they've received. And then the entrance begins. Your name is called out one by one. And you enter Jannah one by one. And you are called by the best names that used to be called in this world. And by your father's names with the best of names. As you enter into Jannah, you get lost in the beauty of what you hear, what you see, and who you meet. Everybody runs off to their own palaces, their own belongings. Al Rasul tells us in the Sahih Hadith that a person will go to their palace and to their property and they'll know exactly where it is, exactly as they knew their homes in this world and even better. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suddenly puts in your heart the know how of how to get to your property. You know it because it belongs to you. And everybody's busy. They want to go and see their property. They want to see their spouses. They want to see the angels. They want to see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for them. So they enter. And there are beautiful, imagine the beautiful sounds that you're going to hear. There's a hadith in Sahih Muslim that Israfil, the angel that blows in the trumpet, sings in Jannah. And his voice is unbelievable, like you've never heard ever. So you don't just enter paradise and it's dull, but with the most beautiful voices, fragrances, sightseeing. The standard look of Jannah, if you were to look at the floor, you know when you go outside and you walk and there's pebbles under you, you just sort of kick them aside. In Jannah they are pearls, pearls and diamonds. Or a type of pearl and a type of uh, you know, different types of gems that you actually stand on and walk on. And this is the most insignificant part of Jannah. So imagine what your buildings are built out of. Imagine what there are tents in Jannah. They are, like, they are actually hollow pearls. One big pearl and it's hollow. Its size is 60 miles in length. I wonder what's in there. Some of my brothers before coming here, he said, Brother, we have sisters invited. Please don't talk about Hur al-Ain. I said, how can you talk about Jannah without talk about talking about Hur al-Ain? And just because Hur al-Ain is there, why are you afraid? There's also something for the women to there too. We just don't talk about it. I had some students, young students, who asked me questions just like that, you know, that without thinking. They say, you know, some of the girls should say, if the boys get women in Jannah, what do the women get? Don't we get men? I say to them, oh my God, this type of a question, you can't ask it right now. <laughs> Just keep it inside here if you're thinking about it. But right now, if you ask it, it doesn't sound nice. And you know what? In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, as Ibn al-Qayyim says, he's of the opinion that women get also their spouses there. And Allah says in the Quran, وَلَهُمْ مَا تَشْتَهِ الْأَنفُسِ وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُونِ You will have whatever your nafs desires and whatever your eye wants to taste. Now leave the imagination up to you. In Jannah, there is anything that you wish for. Whatever you desire in your nafs. And what is nafs? Nafs has many different desires. Never, many different wants. It's called the nafs. The desires. And what the eye wants to taste. What it enjoys looking at and feels as though you're tasting something. That's what Jannah has in there. However, let's inshallah get there first. And then we'll talk about it. Brothers and sisters in Islam. You enter Jannah and you are escorted to your palace. And you're looking around and you see these beautiful trees, the trunks made of gold. What's that? Made of gold? Is it like the gold of this world? No. This silver? Is it like the silver of this world? No. You look at it and you say, this is gold, that's silver, but it's not like any gold I've ever seen before or silver I've ever seen. The trunks are huge. The leaves are massive. The shade is humongous. There are trees that take a horse to gallop very fast, as in the hadith. A very fast, swift horse. 
for three days to cross just the shade of some of its trees. So you're escorted along the way. And your eyes have already been taken away by the beauty of everything that you see. You're taken away by the beauty of the, uh, the pebbles that you're stepping on. The normal dirt that you're walking on. The saffron, the grass which you see in front of you. You are taken away and you think, is this my land? Is this my land? Are these my palaces? No, they're not. That's just the standard of Jannah. And you're going. Suddenly your face changes. Your body changes. Your appearance changes. Everything about you changes. You enter and you reach your palace. And there you see your palace minimum made of golden bricks and silver bricks. It has been kept together with musk, pure musk. How? Allahu alam. And the light is humongous. It emanates from the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the light of Jannah. There's no sun. The light comes from the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you reach that palace, over there, there are some people waiting for you. The people who are waiting for you, number one is your spouse, your wife. Now the sisters are thinking, how did I get there first? <laughs> well, you've been escorted by angels and you're gift wrapped and prepared. You see, we have this, I'm, I do marriages a lot, and there are sometimes uh, situations where I get the aris, the, uh, bride, the groom, after I've done his uh, his uh, marriage, and I like to encourage him, I go, come with me so we can get the signature of the sister. You come with me and her father. And I've made that a couple of times mistakes because some, some cultures, they don't allow the groom to see the wife until I don't know when. Because they're preparing her. They're not meant, not meant to see her. The point that I'm trying to make is, just like here in this world, the bride is prepared. And she has more time to get ready, much more time to get ready, until the groom comes along and then he meets her and his eyes drop out of his face and he cannot believe what he's seeing. Well, you know, in Jannah, because he looks at her and thinks, hold on, I've been talking to you for a couple of months now with your father's presence and mahrams, I know we didn't go out, no. We talk, inshallah, in the home. But right now, you look like this marvelous woman with all, because you know, she's, made, she's done up, right? This is your wife. In Jannah, she's also prepared that way. And the angels have prepared her with a beautiful dress. And she looks amazing. Now, I want to tell you something. There's a story my father told me. He says, uh, they went to a funeral once, and there was an old man there, probably about 80 years old. His wife had died. May Allah subhanahu wa have mercy on her. And the Shaykh said, Oh Allah, unite him and her in Jannah forever. Now the old man is crying and says, Wallah, I miss my wife, Ya Shaykh, but come on, you know, it's been 70 years together. <laughs> I have to stay with her forever, sir. <laughs> then he starts talking, but I've had this trouble and that problem with her, and I'm going to have an old woman again in Jannah. I want some of those other women up there. <laughs> so the Shaykh said to him, but if you see your wife in Jannah, she's not going to look the same at all as here, nor are you. She'll be transformed. I met one of those older people and I said to him, when you see your wife in Jannah, you're going to look at her and think, oh my God, it's the Hur al-Ain, Allahu Akbar. One thread of her hair, if it were to be shown on the earth, it will light up more than the sun. In the hadith, if she spat in, in the ocean, it will turn it all sweet. And then they tell her, this is your wife. And he'll say, Subhanallah, how beautiful she is. And they'll say, that was your wife in the former world. He says, no, 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 this is not my wife. It can't be. My other wife used to be like this, and she used to give me a headache. And whenever I came back late from work, she'd give me a Q&A session. And then uh, if that wasn't enough, she'd keep talking and talking until we fell asleep. And I have to wake up late to work and get... That's not my wife. They say, yes, it is. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away all the negativity from you and her and all the ugliness and everything that used to exist I'm not saying that they're ugly here I'm saying the ugliness whatever exists of ugliness in men and women and we all have that in Jannah brothers and sisters she will be the most desired to him the former wife do you think that the women of Jannah are prettier than the women of this world who enter Jannah I'm on the opinion that they're not by far by far in fact, 70 multiples is minimum of beauty and desire and attractiveness. 
She is the perfect one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given her her reward for working hard in this world. And he also.